Hello and welcome to the JTAG Master video presentation. In this tutorial I will show you how to program and test JTAG devices using the JTAG Master. As you start the ABI Interface Manager software, known as AIMS, you will notice username and passwords to control access to the software. Once you're logged in, the Test Flow Manager opens up with some pre-saved test flows. The concept of test flow will be dealt with later on in this presentation. For those who are not familiar with the principles of JTAG, you may review the JTAG Basics presentation available from ABI Electronics. There are three instruments available within the AIM software, the JTAG Programmer, the JTAG Boundary Scan and the e -square Prom Programmer. We will start with the JTAG Programmer. The JTAG programmer uses the JTAG interface to program devices in system. This means when the components are already soldered on the board. To do so, connect the JTAG master to the board and select the programming file. These can be with an extension of .jam, .jbc or .svf. Select the various options in the JTAG programmer interface. That is the maximum JTAG frequency whether the system should check for the JTAG chain consistency before programming and whether you wish to see the detailed messages during programming. Click Start when ready. The past result indicates that the Atmega 16 has been successfully programmed. Programming with a JTAG master is particularly useful as it is not device or manufacturer dependent as long as the device is JTAG enabled. Let's now have a look at the JTAG boundary scan. The JTAG boundary scans monitors the states of the pin of a component to allow it to be tested. Let's start by setting up our JTAG chain which is a list of components on the board that can be tested using boundary scan. This can be done manually by clicking Add and Edit to edit the component properties. These are the manufacturer, the family and finally the actual device reference. A manual reference can be added such as U13 training for instance. As this component is available in different packages you may select the package that represents the component best. In this case, it's a QFP44 pins. The software now represents the components under test. Another way of setting up the boundary scan chain is to use the detect button, which will automatically list all the components that are part of the JTAG chain on the board. A message appears informing the user that some devices could not be uniquely identified. This is because some manufacturers use the same ID code for some variations of a similar component. To resolve this issue, simply edit the component. In this instance, the component EP1C4 is available in two variations. Simply select the one that is suitable by checking the reference on the board. The same can be done to other devices to complete the JTAG chain, which in this example contains four devices. Should a device not be in the library, you may import its BSDL file using the import command in the library manager. These files are readily available from manufacturer's websites. We are now ready to run a boundary scan by clicking the read button. Please note that in this instance, all four components are fully programmed and functioning normally on the board. This means that the JTAG master is not interfering with the functionality of the board. The software returns the state of all the pins and displays it on the right hand side. A red is for a logic high, a green is for a logic low, an O is for an output and an I is for an input. There is also the option of high impedance or off pins. The grey pins are simply pins that by default are not part of JTAG. 
Using a loop mode, variation in the pin states can be observed while the device is still functioning normally. This information is crucial for testing as previously it was very difficult or even impossible to probe these devices. Note that you can place the device in bypass mode by clicking edit and selecting bypass device. In this instance this device will not be scanned as part of the test. One of the key features of the JTAG Master is its ability to record all the states of all the pins on the components of the board. This process is called training and can be done manually by selecting each pin of the component and either allowing or ensuring the results, or it can be done automatically over a given period of time. When clicking Learn Now, the state of all the pins will be recorded in the memory of the software. When training is complete, another board may be connected to the JTAG Master and another boundary scan may start. In this instance, the states of all the pins of the components will be compared with the data previously acquired during training. Should there be any differences between these, they will be highlighted by the software. Let's have a look at pin 33 of device U13. During training, this pin has been seen in a high input state and not in any other. Therefore, for the test to pass this particular pin, it must be read in the high input state only, which is the case in this example. However, should this pin not compare with the previously saved data, it will be automatically highlighted in the software. This will be represented by a red box over the device. It can also be viewed by using the coverage view of the JTAG Master. This pin has now turned red because it fails comparison and has also caused other pins to fail the comparison. Checking that a device passes this test not only ensures that the device has the correct functionality but also that its pins or balls are making good contact with the rest of the PCB. The AIM software offers the option to save the data acquired during training in order to use it using an external application. This application, known as JTAG Master Scan Check, will automatically run a comparison between the acquired data live and the saved data from the AIM software. A simple pass or fail result will be returned, which is useful in order to run this comparison on a separate PC. Back in the AIM software, let's have another look at a JTAG chain. Let's pick a device and click Edit to place the device in what is known as the X-Test mode. In this mode, the device is no longer responding to its internal program. Instead, the state of each of the pins can be set individually by the user as an input, an output logic low or an output logic high. This test is particularly useful to control the state of a particular pin and to observe the differences in other devices on the JTAG chain or indeed in other areas on the PCB. The JTAG Master also allows for the programming of E-square PROM devices out of circuit using an out of circuit adapter fitted to the JTAG Master. With the part number of the E-square PROM entered the correct reference can be found from the library. From there, components can be read from, written to, verified, or indeed erased if supported by the device. One of the popular features of the AIM software is its ability to use test flows. A test flow is a step-by-step -step test sequence that guides the user through the testing process. 
Each step contains a set of instructions including photos, text, PDF or even web content. However, they also include the instruments required for the test, including the setup of the scan chain and indeed all the saved data for comparison. The test flow is particularly useful to follow a logical step-by-step -step approach to testing and fault finding. The JTAG Master is available with a training kit which includes detailed exercises for first-time users.